This is what it's all about, so. Well, they look like young adults, so. Go ahead, let's just see what we got here. Well, good, I like that answer. I was hoping it would say that. <laughs> so thank you for all the industry people are here today trying to positively impact education. Okay, Paul, you and Judith. Hi, good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Are you awake in the room? Now that that's a high school teacher. Teacher, <laughs> teacher boy. <laughs> right. So what's the issue that we're exploring today? STEM education and how to deliver it for the 21st century workforce. Now I'm going to set this up and then we'll do introductions. as everybody gets mic'd. Well, Judy, I just want to say uh, thank you for inviting us to The View this morning. Uh, shall we call you Oprah? No. <laughs> no. Okay. We want to make there's sure we, only one Oprah. There's only one Oprah. Okay. No one should even deign to imitate her. <laughs> no. Judy is good. Judy is good. Judy is good. So, you know, the, the, the critical question here and the one that my uh, friends will be discussing is how do we address the need for engineers and scientists when we are graduating less than half of the 400,000 engineers and scientists that we need every year? How do we prepare students to function effectively in the workforce of tomorrow when we aren't even certain of what kinds of jobs are going to be there? So how do we do this? Well, Project Lead the Way is part of the answer to this. Because what we do is focus on the essential and critical skills that they're going to need to be innovative and flexible and capable of incorporating new information and new ideas on an ongoing basis. So we can't always plan to, to prepare them for a specific job with specific skills, but rather we need for them to be innovators, we need for them to be able to move through several different iterations of the same career, several different careers. Now our business and industry partners tell us that the primary attributes that they require in their professional workforce, whether they're technicians, engineers, or scientists, are, first of all, they have to be critical thinkers. Secondly, they need to be problem solvers both for predictable and unpredictable situations. And then thirdly, they need to be able to collaborate doing both of the above. So our focus in Project Lead the Way is to teach those students, and there's a key phrase coming up that you're going to hear over and over again. We want our students to understand, to design, to build, and to evaluate functional integrated systems. The level of understanding and the collection of skills is how we are creating that innovation generation. Whether we're working in the area of engineering or biomedical sciences, and we have curriculum for both now, we are working with critical thinking, problem solving, and collaborative skills. Now, Project Lead the Way as an organization walks the talk. We are a functional integrated system in the way we work. A couple of interesting points that I want to bring up. We design and implement curriculum in collaboration with business and industry and university affiliate professors and master teachers. We design and implement teacher training in collaboration with affiliate universities and master teachers. We collect data to evaluate and validate the curriculum on an ongoing basis. We design and implement partnerships with business and industry to support our Project Lead the Way schools and programs. 
And we create partnerships and organizations that, cr uh, with organizations that share common goals for STEM education, especially for young women and underserved minorities. So these partnerships that Project Lead the Way develops with schools, post-secondary institutions, business and industry is again yet another functional integrated system that is critical to the development of going back to our first issue, the development of that 21st century STEM workforce. Each of the partners is a significant system unto itself, but it's also a significant subsystem that is interdependent and interrelated as a component in the development of engineers and scientists of the future. So today you're going to hear from uh, each of the partners in this innovative, functional, integrated system that is creating the innovation generation for the 21st century. Schools, post-secondary partners, and business and industry partners will explain what part they play in the creation of the engineers and scientists of the future through their engagement with Project Lead the Way and with each other. So do we have that yet? Okay. And, and, yeah. and uh, forgive the small font, but I think that the critical idea here is to help you to see how we think in terms of this, this uh, recursive looping system. And that Project Lead the Way has tried to integrate throughout this set of partnerships, and that they go both ways, that this isn't a linear process, but it's a recursive process. So at this point, uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, our uh, guests. Yes. And uh, first of all, uh, Kim Adams is the Vice President of Human Resources uh, for Lockheed Martin. Thank you for being with us. Audience, can we welcome Kim to the, to the, to the room? <laughs> Often I get booed out of the room oh, because oh. of being in human resources, so this is good. Well, we're in, we're in New Mexico, though, so it's, it's different. Yeah, this is the friendly state. This is the friendly state. Uh, from Sandia Labs, Nick Deru. He's a scientist. Anything to say to welcome? Just honored to be here. Thank you. Scientists are like that, right? They're just very short and to the point. Okay, well, maybe we'll bring him out a little bit later here. Uh, if, if Paul Stevenson, you probably all know Paul, and the reason that Paul is such a successful educator in the secondary environment, in the high school environment, I know because I came from education, is that he can project and he can engage and he doesn't let an opportunity, he doesn't let